Hi, this is Dr. Mori with Uncivilized Vitality, and we're going over the eight families of uh, uncivilized tech and the tools. And today we're going to go over, just like in your handbook, we're going to go over the cutting and digging tools. So pre-civilized humans all used cutting and digging tools or some version of uh, each of the family the categories. So cutting and digging, um, there's a lot out there. And we're obviously, you can see our other videos about knife use and axe and saw safety and usage and which knives we recommend. But I'm going to give you kind of an overview of the first and second line of toolkits. First line would be the ones that I have with me and would take if I'm camping by myself or with a small group. When we get into bigger groups, like we like to camp socially uh, with UV, we don't need all of these tools for each individual. So let's talk about uh, the main one, which is the knife first. You should always have three knives. I know that sounds like a lot. Um, people are really into some of these big sort of woodland knives. This is the SRT from Habilis Bush Tools. Uh, this thing's a beast. I can dig with it, chop with it, uh, do fine tasks with it. It's a great knife, but it's big and, it's, it's big and heavy. You don't need anything that big to go out into the woods. I don't want to get into the whole big knife and small knife controversy, but you don't need anything that big. I would recommend, here's a couple of versions. This is just a Mora knife, um, Mora companion. Bright orange handle, real hard to lose that in the woods. And you can put a file here to get you a straight spine for scraping sparks off your ferro rod or if, uh, scraping bark. But for the most part, this would work out real well. And as a bonus, they usually run about 10 bucks. Uh, this one is the Backpacker Pro by White River Knives. That's here in Michigan. Bright orange scales. So I have a hard time losing it. Um, doesn't have a sharp spine, but it's got some. I have some other options to start a fire with. And then I had the sheath made by Doug Wilson over at Yellowhawk Custom Kydex. Uh, I have Doug do most of my uh, sheaths, so I know I'm not going to lose that knife on the trail. So that's a good backpacking knife or camping knife and about the right size. Uh, another good size knife that I recommend, this is the uh, Essie Izula. This one's, this one's pretty old, it's probably 20 years old. Um, I carry that sometimes. So the White River Backpacker Pro, the Essie Izula, these are about the size knife I recommend that you carry with you. Now as far as a folder, I've got a, a Spyderco Dragonfly, it's in the bright orange. Great knife, wouldn't lose it. Sometimes I use this as my personal knife uh, that I keep on me at all times. But as a folder, I typically don't feel that it's going to stand up to the rugged or heavy use it gets in the outdoors. Slightly more robust would be the, the Spyderco Delica. This is a Delica 4 in gray. I don't use this out in the woods because being gray, I drop it, it's gone. So there's some type of knives to give you an idea of the size. The one that I go with... Um, it's not as big as that uh, SRT or even a, a Becker BK9 or 7. This is an LT Wright Nesmuk. I think this is the Camp Muck. Right? This is a great knife. It's big enough for all the tasks I need a knife for. Uh, it's got a sharp spine for scraping bark or processing uh, wood. It's got that Nesmuk curve, so it's good for food processing. And combined with another Yellowhawk Custom Kydex. Thanks, Doug. Okay. That knife is always with me. This is what we call our belt knife um, designation. So this is my main camp knife. I use this around camp. I carry it in the outdoors. It's not quite a one tool option, but it does, uh, I have a ferro rod with it, kind of right on the case. This is my main belt knife. I always have this when I'm running around at camp. Take it off at night or we're doing short hikes around camp, but this is my main camp knife. It's about all the size I feel you need for a camp knife. Now, my personal knife that's always on me, uh, either around my neck or dangling off my belt. Um, sometimes I use this instead of the LT Wright Camp Muck. This is another LT Wright. Uh, I can't say enough things about his knife quality. Uh, this is the Great Plainsman. I don't know if this was a Bark River uh, run or if this was just right from LT. But this is a great knife. Sometimes this is my main belt knife or camp knife because it's just big enough to get everything done I need around the camp. And sometimes I just have it dangling in this uh, leather uh, dangler from JRE's uh, Industries uh, Sheath Makers. They come with a, a lot of LT right knives come with this. It does have a, a Kydex option I had Doug made me, but I don't have it with me right now. 
So that's about the size I would choose for a belt knife. I take the heavier, more robust nest muck if I'm going to be out for a few days. If we're only going on a weekend or just one of our UV uh, uh, leader campaigns, I just take the smaller belt knife. Now on my body, I always have a small personal knife. Sometimes I'll go with just a small folder. We sometimes call this a string and cheese knife just for cutting string or slicing up my cheese. But I recommend a good multi-tool. This one is the Signal by Leatherman. It's got a blade and a saw for cutting notches or for, again, just kind of carving up food. Um, and it's got, like most Leathermans, the pliers and the wires, the, the wire cutters on the needle nose. Sometimes it helps pulling out splinters and things. And it has an awl. Uh, you find a lot of uses for an awl out in the woods. Okay. Can opener, bottle opener, and then, of course, a bit driver that you can change out with the Leatherman flat bits uh, for different things. Maybe repairing your eyeglasses or uh, something in the, uh, out in the woods. I find these come in handy, too, sometimes picking up the, the pots out of the fire. The Leatherman Signal also has this little hammer pole on the end. I've used that on stakes a couple times or knocked the ice off of things. It's just a good knife. It gives me a multi-tool uh, as my personal knife. Uh, that's always in my pocket or clipped to me or on my chest rig. Uh, another good one would be the rebar or maybe even the um, the wave. It's a bit much for the woods, but the signal fits the bill real well. Now, I feel comfortable going on our events with a smaller knife because we also take a saw for processing wood and some form of axe. So the type of saw, this is the Baco Laplander. This one... Uh, I think everybody knows about this. This is a great folding saw. can process a lot of wood uh, with this. Maybe not big, big rounds of oak uh, or some harder woods, but I can get enough to get a campfire going. It folds up, it's super lightweight, slips right in a pocket or my pack, and is uh, super handy for a saw option. Getting a little bigger, you can come to the Sven saw. This is their smaller, I think it's the 15-inch Sven saw, and sometimes we carry the 21-inch Sven saws. This is more of a bucking saw. You can fold this out. It comes out into, um, if you haven't seen the Sven saws, we can put a link uh, so you can check those videos out. It's another good way to process firewood so I'm not using up my knife. And then, of course, having an axe with you all the time. Okay, this is a Columbia River Knife and Tool. I think this is their Berserker uh, Tomahawk or Hand Axe. The Chogun's another really good one. But any kind of hand axe or uh, hatchet, in uncivilized vitality, I prefer the tomahawks because if I break the handle, I can replace that in the field um, as opposed to maybe a hatchet. I wouldn't have that option. So that's good for processing wood. If you feel like something a little more robust, maybe a slightly larger um, camp axe or boys axe, I wouldn't necessarily feel the need to take a splitting ball into the woods. But this is the Cold Steel uh, Trail Boss. We put a little... Uh, leather neck guard on there. But this gets most of our most of our chores done around camp. So if I have an axe, a saw, and then my, my belt knife, I can do all the wood processing and uh, camp um, processing, building uh, tripods and frames and shelters and things with those three cutting tools. And these are just a couple different versions. If I was traveling light, I would carry just the Laplander and my axe. Uh, sometimes I forego the axe and just take the Laplander and my personal knife when we process enough wood. Some place we go like Manitou Island uh, in Michigan, up in Lake Michigan in the north. There's no open fires allowed, so we just use the stoves. I only have to process natural fuel in small bits. I typically don't need an axe. It's just a small saw. Uh, another good tool to have would be maybe a draw knife and then a, um, an auger or a scotch eye. Um, that's not part of our typical kit, though. So those are our cutting tools. And as far as our digging tools go, that's pretty simple. This is Michigan, so a lot of times we find the use of a snow shovel. This is just a light aluminum or titanium snow shovel for moving lots of snow and ice to get down to the ground to make camps or shelters uh, or to find your way out. So we take these. Um, this is by a company called Sub-Zero. It's really lightweight. It's got a couple attachment points for carabiners. It packs down real well. You can change the angle on the uh, the shovel head so you can pull with the, pull the snow like a, like an adz. 
But this is a nice shovel to have in the winter in Michigan. Typically though, we'll take just a regular military surplus shovel. I'm not a fan of the folding shovels, although they work just fine. Uh, just a straight handled shovel. Uh, my favorite is the Cold Steel Special Forces shovel. Mine's out in the Jeep. This is just a military surplus shovel we picked up and we use this a lot for putting out fires or digging trenches. Uh, you find a lot of a lot of need for moving earth uh, when you're out in the woods. And then besides having a shovel, or maybe two if it's the winter, you're always going to want to have a personal shovel or a hand trowel. This one is by Vargo. It's their little titanium uh, shovel. It's got these teeth and such. It's got a good hand grip and it fits my hand. I could lash it to a stick if I wanted to improvise a, a longer shovel. But basically, uh, this is just your personal trowel. This goes in my salt needle kit or my toiletry bag, and I use this to dig my cat holes when I have to do my business in the woods. I wouldn't dig um, a shelter with this hand trowel. I suppose I could if I needed to. But just having this with me, it's lightweight, it's titanium. Then I don't have to service out a digging stick when I get to camp just to do my business. I just kind of got this with me. Uh, one of the good things about these Vargos is you can use this as a stake too, or a, a snow stake, a snow plow when you're setting up shelter in the uh, winter. You can dig this down into the sand or the snow and attach your guidelines or anything else and use this as an improvised uh, stake or anchor. Okay. So this is good to have a personal trowel. So the uncivilized cut and dig, you're always going to want to have in your kit, or you can share out the burden, snow shovels, axes, and larger saws. A personal axe and a personal saw is a good idea if you're out by yourself. Always have a personal knife of some type on you, a small folder, a small uh, straight blade, a fixed blade that's out of the way, maybe a neck knife. But I find that a multi-tool uh, gives you a variety of options besides just being a personal knife. And then of course your main belt knife or a bushcraft knife. You want a good solid one. I tend toward the smaller, more maneuverable knives than the bigger um, uh, like I said, the uh, the BK9s or the, the big SE uh, Hunglis or any of those type of huge knives. So with these few tools, you can do almost everything you need to do out in the woods without carrying a lot of gear. Uh, and the primitive pre-civilized people uh, all had knives, axes of some sort, and digging sticks or shovels. Saws are kind of a later invention, but you cannot underestimate how handy a saw is. So this is our cut and dig set of tools, our family of um, uncivilized tech. And uh, we'll have lots of other videos up showing the uses and uh, tricks and thing tips you can do. This is just sort of our official kit. And I um, appreciate if you like and subscribe to the channel since it's just getting going. And uh, see you next time.